Good morning, boys and girls, and welcome back to Children's Liturgy of the Word. We're so very glad that you've decided to come and visit us again today. Our readings today are again from what we like to call Cycle A, which we've been doing for the past, oh gosh, since last December. So we've already changed months. It's now October and we are getting very close to the end of the Cycle A year. But we're still in Cycle A, so we're on the 27th Sunday in Ordinary Time. Our first reading today is a reading from the prophet Isaiah. I will sing a song about the vineyard of my dear friend, it was on the side of a fertile hill. My friend dug the ground, removed the stones, and planted the best vines. He built a watchtower and dug a place to press the grapes. He hoped they would be good, but bitter grapes were all that grew. Now listen, people of Jerusalem and of Judah. You be the judge of me and my vineyard. What more could I have done for my vineyard? I hoped for good grapes, but bitter grapes were all that grew. Now I will tell you what I am going to do. I will cut down the hedge and tear down the wall. My vineyard will be trampled and left in ruins. It will turn into a desert neither tended nor hold, and it will be covered with thorns and briars. I will command the clouds not to send it rain. Israel is the vineyard of the Lord all-powerful. Judah is the garden that makes him rejoice. He had hoped for honesty and for justice, but dishonesty and crying were all that he found. The word of the Lord. And we say, thanks be to God. Our response psalm is, the vineyard of the Lord is the house of Israel. The vineyard of the Lord is the house of Israel. We were like a grapevine you brought out of Egypt. You chased other nations away and planted us here. The vineyard of the Lord is the house of Israel. Its branches stretched to the sea. Its new growth reached to the river. The vineyard of the Lord is the house of Israel. See what's happening to this vine? With your own hands you planted its roots. Lord God all-powerful, make us strong again. Smile on us and save us. The vineyard of the Lord is the house of Israel. Our second reading today is from the letter of Paul to the people who lived in a city called Philippi. So they were known as Philippians, brothers and sisters, don't worry about anything, but pray about everything. With thankful hearts, offer up your prayers and requests to God. Then, because you belong to Christ Jesus, God will bless you with peace that no one can completely understand. And this peace will control the way you think and feel. Finally, my friends, keep your minds on whatever is true, pure, right, holy, friendly, and proper. Don't ever stop thinking about what is truly worthwhile and worthy of praise. You know the teachings I gave you, and you know what you heard me say and saw me do. So 
follow my example and God who gives peace will be with you the word of the Lord thanks be to God and now we stand for the gospel alleluia 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 I have chosen you from the world says the Lord to go and bear fruit that will last. Alleluia, alleluia. Our gospel today is a reading from the Holy Gospel according to Matthew. Glory to you, O Lord. The Lord be on our mind, on our lips, and forever in our hearts. Jesus told the chief priests and leaders to listen to this story. A landowner once planted a vineyard. He built a wall around it and dug a pit to crush the grapes in. He also built a lookout tower. Then he rented out his vineyard and left the country. When it was harvest time, the owner sent some servants to get his share of the grapes. But the renters grabbed those servants, they beat up one, killed one, and stoned one of them to death. He sent more servants than he did the first time, but the renters treated them in the same way. Finally, the owner sent his son to the renters because he thought they would respect him. But when they saw the man's son, the renters said, Someday he will own the vineyard. Let's kill him. Then we can have it all for ourselves. So they grabbed the son, threw him out of the vineyard, and killed him. Jesus asked his listeners, When the owner of that vineyard comes, what do you suppose he will do to those renters? The chief priests and the leaders answered, he will kill them in some horrible way. Then he will rent out his vineyard to people who will give him his share of the grapes at harvest time. Jesus replied, Surely you know what the scriptures say. The stone that the builders tossed aside is now the most important stone of all. This is something the Lord has done, and it is amazing to us. I tell you that God's kingdom will be taken from you and given to people who will do what he demands. The word of the Lord. And we say, thanks be to God. Hmm. Well, boys and girls, we have some interesting scriptures today. Before we go to the gospel story, though, I'd like to think about that second reading that we heard, Paul to the Philippians. In his first line, he said, don't worry about anything, but pray about everything. Have you ever worried about something, boys and girls? Have you ever sat in your bed maybe at night and worried about a test you were going to take, or whether your friends liked you, or if mom or dad will find out that you did something wrong. You know what? When I was a little girl, I was a worrier. In fact, I used to worry so much, I used to bite my fingernails because I was often worried that something would happen. And most of the things that I worried about never actually happened. There were never any monsters under my bed, even when I turned on the lights. And there was no one in my closet when I opened the door. When the rain came, and I used to worry about floods, that never happened either. Because the rain would stop and everything would be fine. Sometimes, when something I worried about really did happen, 
like the time that I was worried that I didn't do very well on the test, and I found out that I really didn't do it right. Nothing terrible happened. The teacher just told me that I could get some extra help so I could learn it better. And when my spelling test didn't work out, I realized that I hadn't studied very much, so I probably should study harder. So oftentimes, boys and girls, what we worry about won't happen. And if it does, our moms and dads and other people will help us to get through it. What does Jesus invite us to do? Jesus invites us to talk to him whenever we are worried. Instead of worrying and fretting, we just come to Jesus. Maybe we sit on our beds and talk to him, or maybe we go to a quiet space and kneel down. But we talk to Jesus in prayer and tell him what's on our mind and in our hearts. And Jesus will help us to feel better. He won't change what can't be changed, but he'll change us instead and help us to understand that sometimes bad things really do happen, but that with God's help and the help of other people, we'll make it through and it won't be so bad. The other two readings, the first reading and the gospel, both were talking about vineyards. Now, I don't know how many of you have ever seen grapevines. Some of you may have seen grapevines, but a grapevine is a very long vine, and oftentimes they will put it on fence posts, and then they'll put wire between the posts, and then the vine will twist its way around the wire. And they would oftentimes have to put up a wall around it because some animals like to eat grapes. And so that's what they mean by the wall. And then they would also have a watchtower and that would be so that they can see if there's any kind of predators who might be trying to come for their grapes. But what we heard in both readings was interesting. Were the grapes good grapes? No. Both readings talked about the fact that the grapes were no good in the first reading. And in the second reading, the tenants, the people who rented the land, they didn't want to give them up to the person who rightly owned them. So let's ask ourselves, who really is the owner of the vineyard? Who do you think it is? Yes, it's God. And what is the vineyard? The vineyard is our earth. It's God's creation. God has given us the earth and everything in it to take care of it. You see, boys and girls, we are those renters. It's God's earth. We're only here to tend it for him to take care of it for him. And God wants us to take care of the earth and so that it will be here for the next generation that we can pass it on to. But instead, there are those people who don't want to listen to God's word, who want to be selfish and to keep everything for themselves. In the Gospel reading, we hear that the God the Father, who is the owner of the vineyard, sent his son because he said, well, they will listen to my son. Did the people listen to Jesus? No. In the end, they killed Jesus because they didn't want to do what God asked them to do. So God wanted to remind us all that we need to take care of God's word and God's creation. We need to be good servants 
good tenants, good renters. How would you feel if you had a plant that only gave bad fruit? Would you like it very much? No. The same is true for us boys and girls. God is delighted when we bear good fruit. What is good fruit? I'm not a tree. It means good deeds, good actions, good words with other people. That's the kind of fruit that Jesus is looking for. So remember, all this week, until I see you next time, try every day to be a good renter of the earth. Care for it. And now we will say our intercessions. Our response is, Lord, hear our prayer. That God's kingdom will grow in us. We pray to the Lord, Lord, hear our prayer. That the sick are made stronger by God's healing love. We pray to the Lord, Lord, hear our prayer. That there be an end to all fighting in the world. Let us pray to the Lord, Lord, hear our prayer. That each one of us do our part to take care of the earth, to keep it clean and fresh, just the way God wanted it. Let us pray to the Lord, Lord, hear our prayer. Well, boys and girls, thank you for coming to Children's Liturgy of the Word today. And remember, be a good renter of the earth. Keep it clean this week. Have a good day.